We have uh, four parts to the self, the mind, the body, the subconscious, and the soul. And each one of these parts is different. They are separate and independent from one another. They interact with one another, and we are uh, all of them. So the difference between the four parts, first of all, uh, I think the easiest way to explain it is in my book, uh, Quantum Warrior, uh, The Future of the Mind, I've given mythic titles to each of the four parts. And these mythic titles, what they, do, they represent psychological aspects. It explains the functions of them. First of all, the mythic title of the mind is Weaver of the Patterns. And when I say Weaver of the Patterns, what I mean is that it thinks thoughts. And you might say, well, why, why don't you just say that it thinks thoughts? I mean, isn't that easier? Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, it, it defines it uh, perhaps clearer. But when I say weaver of the patterns, what that does is that evokes imagery. And imagery helps us understand its function. So we are connected to the energy web, a field of energy of everything. And what the mind does is through thinking thoughts, it weaves patterns of energy. Uh, the second uh, mythic title of the mind is its guardian to the gates of the subconscious. And this is a very important function and it's one that people really don't understand at all. Um, uh, they say, well, why do you have to guard against what happens uh, with the subconscious? Well, very simply is that every thought that you think uh, is a force of energy. And when thoughts are repeated over and over and over again, what happens is they take an imprint into the subconscious. So when you repeat something to yourself, either positive or negative, uh, and you do it over a number of days and months and and you focus on it and you think about it and you repeat it, that's going to take an image into the subconscious. Now, if it's a positive uh, statement, if it's something supportive for you, great, fabulous. In fact, that's what you should be doing. But if it's something very negative, like uh, I'm getting old, my health isn't, uh, uh, I guess I can't expect good health from here on in, or I'm never going to get ahead financially, or um, gee, it's almost impossible to get a, a relationship or whatever uh, negative image you're repeating to yourself. Uh, if you repeat it enough, it goes to the subconscious. And as you see shortly when I get into the mythic titles of the subconscious, that's not what you want. So that's why we call it um, guardian to the gates of the subconscious is when the mind understands that, what it does is uh, it becomes the mind's responsibility to make sure that it thinks only the highest quality thoughts. The uh, mythic title of the subconscious is that it is holder of the patterns. And notice that the mind is the weaver of the patterns, but the subconscious is the holder of the patterns. And as I um, just stated, as you repeat something over and over again, what happens is it will take a pattern into the subconscious and the subconscious will hold that. And not only hold it, it will vibrate it, it will become part of who you are, it becomes a, a living energetic, an active energetic inside you, and as the second um, mythic title of the subconscious is that it's communicator with the web. And so what happens is that whatever images, whatever beliefs, uh, whatever energetics you have resonating within you on a subconscious level, that is going to communicate vibrationally out to the energy web and attract 
the people, the circumstances, the situations that matches the images that you have within. And the third mythic title of the subconscious is that it is the engine of our success. And so if we want success in our life, and you, everybody wants success of some type, uh, then what you want to do is you want to get your subconscious working for you because it is the engine of success. Now, the body, uh, the body has its mythic titles too. Uh, the one uh, mythic title of the body is it is the feeling knowing one in time and space. And what do I mean by that? <laughs> that sounds all very mysterious. Well, first of all, the body's in time and space. Now, the mind can transcend time and space, uh, and, uh, but the body cannot. The body is here now. It is in time and space, and it's the feeling knowing one. There's great wisdom in the body. Uh, the Hermetic Traditions calls the body condensed wisdom. And when we w learn to work with body wisdom, when we learn to trust our feelings, our intuitions, then uh, what will happen is our body will work for us and give us very valuable information. And that brings us to the second mythic title of the body, and that is, it is navigator to our destiny. Now, a lot of people make a big mistake in thinking that they're going to find their destiny by their mind. I mean, what's my destiny? <laughs> trying to figure out, trying to figure out what your destiny is and your purpose and meaning in your life. Uh, your mind can never tell you what your destiny is. In fact, it will only mislead you if you follow your mind. Only one part of you can navigate to your destiny and that is your body. And you find your destiny by following what feels right. And when you follow what feels right, then um, that's what leads you to your destiny. And then the final part of who we are is our soul. And the soul, uh, the mythic title of the soul is the awakened heart. And that might sound a little bit like a misnomer. I mean, shouldn't the awakened heart be in the body? But no. What it is, is that how you awaken your soul is by awakening your heart. And that gives you a key as to exactly what the soul is, is the soul longs to serve and be with others, to be one with others. And our mind may conceptualize this, but it can only have it as a concept. The body can feel it and the soul knows it. And so the great um, challenge, the great opportunity that we have as human beings is to awaken our soul. And when we awaken, how we awaken our soul is by awakening our heart. And when we awaken our heart and love one another and serve one another and respect one another and feel our oneness with one another, then we're awakening our soul and uh, our soul will guide us in all aspects of our life. A very, very powerful part of who we are. It's not spiritual, it's not mystical, it's not religious. It's a function of the human being. So we have these four parts, mind, body, subconscious, and soul. We're extraordinary beings of consciousness and energy. And what we want to do is get all these four parts aligned and functioning together then we become an authentic human being.